The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 13 on a distance learning program. I am Fobang Emmanuel, your chemistry teacher. Today, we are going to be looking at the main topic, matter, properties, and its transformations and our focus is going to be on the subtopic chemistry of the elements, precisely alkali and the alkali earth metals. The outcomes of this lesson are as follows. The learners should be able to list at least three members of each group, that is three members of the alkali metals and three members of the alkali earth metal families. Secondly, the learners should be able to carry out the reactions of metals with cold water and with oxygen. They should be able to explain the trend of the reactivity of the elements in each group. And they should also be able to prepare the compounds of the elements of group one and group two, and also state their properties and some of their very important uses. Another outcome of this lesson is that as a learner, you should be able to explain the causes of the hardness of water and also describe the methods by which hardness can be removed. Lastly, you should be able to use soap, which is a very common substance that we use on a daily basis to distinguish between hard water and soft water. This subtopic is divided into two main sections. We have the alkali metals and we have the alkali earth metals. And uh, we, under this first section, alkali metals, we have three lessons. The first is the general properties of group one elements. The second is the preparation of the hydroxide, halite, sulfate, nitrate, and carbonate of group one elements. And the third is the properties of the hydroxide, chloride, sulfate, nitrate, and carbonate of group one elements. Under the second section, alkaline earth metals, we have four lessons. The first is on the general properties of the elements of group two. The second is on the preparation of the hydroxides, halide, sulfate, nitrate, and carbonate of group two elements. The third is on the properties of the hydroxides, halide, sulfate, nitrate, and carbonate of group two elements. And the last lesson is going to be on the hardness of water. Before we get into our lesson proper, I would like us to check the assignment that we did in our last lesson, lesson 12. This is the assignment. Copper oxide reacts with sulfuric acid to form copper sulfate and water. In an experiment, 1.6 grams of dry copper sulfate crystals were made. If the theoretical yield is 2.0 grams, calculate the percentage yield for this reaction. Solution. First, we write the equation for the reaction between copper oxide and the sulfuric acid to produce copper to sulfate and water. And uh, we often encourage students, when you have a question like this, it's important to take down the data that has been given to you. So from the question, our actual yield is 1.6 grams. Our theoretical yield is 2.0 grams. 
And uh, in our last lesson, we saw that to calculate percentage yield, we take the actual yield, we divide it by the theoretical yield, and we multiply it by 100. Therefore, if we apply the data that has been given to us in the question, we are going to have percentage yield is equal to 1.6 grams, our actual yield, divided by 2.0 grams, our theoretical yield, times 100. This is going to lead to, this is going to give us a percentage yield of 80%. The second question expected us to list all the elements that are in group 1 and group 2 in the periodic table in order of increasing atomic number. In group 1, we have lithium with symbol Li, we have sodium with symbol Na, we have potassium with symbol K, we have rubidium with symbol Rd, we have cesium with symbol Cs, and we have francium with symbol Fr. And then for the elements of group 2, we have beryllium with symbol BE, we also have magnesium with symbol MG, calcium with symbol CA, strontium with symbol SR, barium with symbol BA, and radium with symbol RA. Lesson 13, as we said at the beginning, is focused on the general properties of the elements of group one. And for us to be able to best understand this lesson, we are going to follow this lesson plan. First, we are going to look at the objectives of the lesson. Secondly, we are going to look at the prerequisites that we need to be able to understand this lesson properly. We'll look at the life situation. We'll look at our learning activities. And then we are going to carry out an evaluation and then we'll have an assignment that will help you better understand or better assimilate what the lesson has been talking about. And then we are going to look at the materials that we use as a reference to prepare the lesson. Our lesson objectives are as follows. The first is that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to establish the alkali metals as a family of elements based on their reactivity with oxygen and water. Secondly, you should be able to state quantitatively the trends in the reactivity within this family. And then, our prerequisites. You can understand this lesson based on what you've been learning before. And one of the things that will help you to better understand this lesson is that you have learned about the periodic table and uh, you know about the electronic configurations of different elements. In particular, you know that in group one, the elements have electronic configurations with one electron on their outermost shell. You also know about the formation of ionic compounds, which is a characteristic of group one elements. Let us look at the real life situation before we proceed. Certain metals like gold, which is used to make jewelry, can be, can be found uncombined in nature. That means you can actually find gold in nature in the uncombined state. And the reason gold can exist in this state is because it is very unreactive. But that is not the case for every other metal. There are some other metals that do not exist in the uncombined state. That means you always find them existing as compounds and you cannot find them existing on their own. And uh, at times we try to extract these metals, we purify them. But when we expose them to air, for example, they immediately react with the active part of air, for example, and uh, become tarnished and lose their purity. From this real life situation, we can ask ourselves this. Give three examples of such reactive metals. We can also ask ourselves to explain why these metals named in one above are so reactive. We are going to revisit this real life situation before we end our lesson. Our learning activities are as follows. We have an experiment or we are, we are going to carry out. We are going to use cold water and a one element and observe what happens when they react. To be able to carry out this experiment and get the most information, we need a beaker and we also need distilled water. So what we do is that we cut a piece of the group one element, put it in water, 
and uh, we observe what happens. Now, as you can see, the metal is actually undergoing a reaction with water. You can actually see some gases being released as the metal is reacting with water. And uh, the reason we use distilled water in this process is to ensure that no other ion present, no other ion is present to actually interfere with our results. After the metal reacts completely with water, the next thing we can do is that we can get an acid-base indicator such as phenolphthalein and then we add two or three drops of this indicator in that solution formed as a result of the reaction between water and the metal and then we observe what happens. When we did the mold concept, we talked about acid base indicators and we made mention of the fact that phenolphthalein is an acid base indicator which is pink in a basic medium and colorless in an acidic medium. From the video you can see that when we added phenolphthalein the solution actually became pink indicating that the solution produced is basic or alkaline. From this video we made the set, the, the, these observations. Why did the scientists use a pair of gloves to handle the metal? Can you guess the answer? The reason is because the metal is a very reactive metal, so it is unsafe to handle it with our bare hands. Explain why the metal moved on the surface of water from side to side and did not sink. You know metals like iron, if you take a piece of iron, you drop it in water, it immediately sinks to the bottom of the water. But this was not the case with what we observed in the video. And the reason is because the metal is lighter than water. That means the density of this metal is lower than that of water. For that reason, it is able to float on water. And is it possible for you to identify the gas that was released as the metal reacted with water. Actually, the gas that, that was produced as the metal reacted with water was hydrogen gas. Another observation we made that we can ask ourselves a question, this question is that the solution became pink. So can you explain why the solution changed from colorless to pink when we added phenolphthalein? The reason is because the product formed during this reaction is alkaline. And we all know that when you put phenolphthalein in an alkaline or a basic medium, it changes to pink. General properties, general physical properties of group one elements. Here on this slide, we have a picture of lithium. We have a picture of sodium. Take note of their colors and take note of what is happening in the picture representing sodium. And then we also have potassium and we have rubidium. From the pictures that you've observed, is it possible for you to actually guess or propose some of the physical properties of group 1 elements? From those pictures, the first thing we see is that the elements of group 1 are silvery white in color. That means they have an appearance that is silvery white and all of them are solid. Another thing that we observe from the pictures is that these group 1 elements are soft and can be, can be cut with a knife. For the picture showing sodium, you could see a scientist holding a piece of knife to actually slice off a piece of sodium. So unlike other metals that are very hard and you cannot use a knife to cut them, group 1 elements are soft so that you can be able to cut them with a knife. Group 1 elements, as we all know, are called alkaline metals. And the reason they are called alkaline metals is because when they react with water, they form alkaline solutions, which are soluble bases. Group 1 elements are metals, and for that reason, they are good conductors of heat and electricity. They are also very light metals, as we saw, and that is the reason why they float on water. They are also highly electropositive. Group 1 elements are very reactive, 
and you cannot store them in the air like you may do for other metals. So to actually store book one metals, we store them in paraffin oil. That is a kind of kerosene. And this is to protect them from coming in contact with air and becoming contaminated. These elements, because they are very reactive, occur combined in nature and are extracted by electrolysis of their molten salts. And most often, we use their molten chloride to extract them through this process. They also form compounds that are soluble in water. For example, table salt or common salt that we use to cook food at home is a compound of a group one element. And when you dissolve it, when you put it in water and you stir, it dissolves without any problem. I would like us right now to look at the general chemical properties of group one elements. The first thing to know about the reactivity of group one elements is that their reactivity increases down the group. That means as you move from sodium, as you move from lithium to sodium to potassium, down right to francium, there is an increase in reactivity. We have the electronic configuration of lithium, indicating that lithium has one electron on the outermost shell. We also have the electronic configuration of sodium, also indicating that sodium has one electron on the valence shell. And because of the fact that group one elements have one electron on the valence shell, they easily lose that electron, and that's what we call electropositivity, and the result is the formation of ions. So group one elements exhibit a stable oxidation state of plus one, and that oxygen state is the result of them losing the single electron that they have on their valence shell. And as you move down the group, given that the size of the atoms increases, the attraction of the nucleus on this last electron gradually reduces. So as the size of the atom increases, this last electron or this valence electron is easily lost. So the reactivity of the group one element increases. Group 1 elements react with air. When you expose sodium, for example, to air, several things happen. The first thing is that the sodium metal immediately reacts with oxygen, which is the active part of air, to form the oxide of sodium, that is sodium oxide. This sodium oxide again reacts with water vapor, that is in air, to form sodium hydroxide, which is a base. And then, given that we have carbon dioxide, which is an acidic gas in air, this sodium hydroxide form also reacts with the carbon dioxide to form sodium carbonate and water. So, group one elements actually tarnish in air, forming a succession of their oxides, their hydroxides, and their carbonates. And it's for this reason that we store them in paraffin oil. When the one element react with water, as we saw in the video, a vigorous reaction takes place. And the result is the formation of sodium hydroxide and the release of hydrogen gas. We carry out the reaction with cold water because the reaction occurs at a slower rate. The reaction with hot water is dangerous because it occurs very fast and at times is even explosive. Group 1 elements also, like, like every other metal, react with dilute acids. And given that they are very reactive, they can be able to displace hydrogen from dilute acids, resulting in the formation of salts. This reaction, however, is not recommended for us to practice in our laboratories, given that group 1 elements are very reactive. Group 1 elements also react with hydrogen. And when they react with hydrogen, they form metallic hydrides. An example, sodium will react with hydrogen to form sodium hydride. In this, take note that in this compound sodium hydride, the hydride ion is the negatively charged ion, and sodium ion still remains a positively charged ion. So the sodium ion gives an electron to the hydrogen atom, which gains, and then it becomes the hydride ion. Group 1 elements, like we said, are very reactive. 
and uh, they exist combined in nature and are, and are extracted by the electrolysis of their molten salt. An example is sodium chloride and we have on the slide the down cell which is the, the setup that is used for the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride for us to obtain sodium metal. During this process, the cathode is made from iron and the anode is made from carbon. At the cathode, the sodium ion in our electrolyte gains electrons and gets discharged to form sodium metal, which is collected in the liquid state and when allowed to cool, it solidifies. Then at the anode, chlorine gas is produced as a result of chlorine losing two electrons to form chlorine gas. Conclusion. In this lesson, we have seen that group one elements are very reactive metals and their reactivity actually increases down the group and the, this is due to an increase in electropositivity as the sizes of the atoms increases down the group. Secondly, it is important to note that group 1 elements are called alkaline metals because they react with water to form alkaline solutions. As we draw to the end of our lesson, I would like us to review our real-life situation. We said that certain metals like gold can be found uncombined in nature because they are very unreactive, while other metals do not exist combined in nature. And even when we, we extract them, purify them, they easily react with oxygen in air, resulting in their formation of their oxide, or they become tarnished. Give three examples of such metals that are so reactive, where we have more than three examples. And such metals include lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium, which are all elements of group one. Explain why these metals named above are so reactive. The reason they are so reactive is because they have one electron on their outermost shell. Before we end our lesson, I would like us to recall a certain number of points. Group 1 elements are very reactive because of the fact that they have one electron on their balance shell and their reactivity increases down the group. Secondly, they are called alkaline metals because they react with water to form alkaline solutions. Thirdly, they tarnish in air, forming a succession of their oxides, hydroxides, and carbonates. And for this reason, we do not store them exposed to air. We are going to store them in paraffin oil to prevent them from coming in contact with air. Evaluation. Why are group one elements called alkaline metals? As we saw in our lesson, they are called alkaline metals because they react with water to form alkaline solutions. Our second question, state theory physical properties of the group one elements. In this lesson, one of the physical properties of the one element we saw is that group one elements are silvery white in color. That means they appear, they have the appearance of silver or they, are, they appear as light green in color. Another physical property of theirs is that they are soft and can be cut with a knife. That means if you take a piece of knife, the knife that you use at home, and you use it to cut a one element like sodium or lithium or potassium, you are going to be able to do that successfully because of their softness. Another physical property of one element, which is generally common to all metals, is that one element are good conductors of heat and electricity. Question number three. How does the reactivity of group one element vary down the group? As we said in the lesson, the reactivity of the group one element increases down the group. 
And this is due to the increase in electropositivity down the room. Because the size of the atoms increases, the tendency for them to lose their valence electrons also increases down the group. So they show an increase in reactivity down the group. And the question number four, what gas is released when sodium reacts with water? When sodium reacts with water, given that it's a very strong reducing agent, it actually displaces hydrogen from water resulting in the formation of the hydrogen gas. And the question number five, what is the effect of the solution produced when one element reacts with water on litmus paper? If you take a piece of litmus paper, either blue or red, and then you drop that solution on it, the blue litmus paper is going to remain blue, while the red litmus paper is going to become Blue. And the reason is because the solution that is produced is alkaline or basic. For us, for you to be able to assimilate what we've talked about in this lesson, you have this assignment. And the first question is this. Using balanced equations, describe what happens when group 1 elements are exposed to air. The second question is how does the reactivity of group one elements vary down the group? And for our references, we used understanding of chemistry by GK Kids and collaborators. We used chemistry by Robert C. Fay. We also made use of ordinary level chemistry for Cameroon schools. And we also got a lot of information from the internet. Our next lesson, which is lesson 14, is going to be focused on the preparation of the hydroxide, chloride, sulfate, nitrate, carbonates of the group one elements. <laughs> Una tege majang matege ndom mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen ngani bana matege mot ngani la kiri watege ndom esakina bia jinki do mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen